Hi guys, me, Rusty78609, Central Texas, USA, 839 a.m. Saturday, August the 20th, <clears throat> 2016. You probably noticed the quality of this video is about a zero on a 10 scale. Well, the reason is I am testing, uh, I've got a little Verizon phone. It's a, uh, oh, I can't remember what they call it. It's one of the things you get track phone that's what it is it's one of the walmart things and uh, anyway i'm going to try and see uh, i know the quality looks pretty grainy right now we'll see how it looks on the tube so so i'm testing that that's one thing and two i'm going to combine there's two uh, viewer comments that are fairly similar so i'm going to combine those into one but anyway it's a rainy day i haven't done my walking yet and uh need to i'm kind of waiting to see if this rain shower is going to go by <clears throat> you know I just looked at one of my responses to a comment. The guy asked me if I owned my lots, and I replied, I won the lots. I misspelled own. Instead of O-W-N, I put W-O-N. So I got to correct that. So, but anyway, here's a comment. It says, hey, Rusty, how are things? Thanks for all the video, blah, blah, blah. I have a question. Do you own the lot that your RV is on, or do you have to pay a monthly rate? I own. I did not win. I own the lot that I have my RV parked on. And I have owned the lots for about 12 years, and I'm glad I did it. Best thing I ever did. Because it gives me a home base, and I like it. It's a good area of Central Texas, and I've always liked Central Texas, and I like the hill country and all that stuff, so enough said about that. Then, there was another comment, and I'll have to go back over here to my Gmail right quick, and note, you know, with light speed internet that I have, this will not take but like that. Okay, and here it is right here, and it says, hello, sir. I'm sir now. I've moved up. Sir Rusty. See, in England, if you're knighted by the Queen, you become, you, everybody has to call you Sir. Like Nick Faldo was a professional golfer, and now he's on TV, and they call him Sir Nick. Bush. <laughs> ah. Anyway, hello, Sir. Your home base is in Central Texas, and perhaps you love it because you have family nearby. I do. I do. Well, kind of. Uh, for someone to buy land and live in an RV... To set up a home base do you have any suggestions on specific states or areas in the u.s based on your travels the criteria are weather especially winter weather two crime rate three cost of land four restrictions five cost of living etc please do a video on this based on your travels and experiences okay and here's what i'll say to that <coughs> Any suggestions as to a particular state? Uh, well, you know, whenever you throw in winter weather, you know, you've pretty much eliminated several of the northern states. So, you know, you're looking at the southwest, in my opinion, the southeast sucks. You know, I wouldn't want to live in Mississippi or Georgia or Florida or any of that crap. Uh, not that they're, you know, they are what they are. For people that live there, they love it. They're used to it. I don't like the humidity and other things. Uh, out west, you get into a drier climate. In the summers, it's hot. In the winters, it's perfect. So, but you can go north in the winter in your RV. North in the winter. No, you want to go north in the summer. See, if you go north in the winter, you'll freeze your ass off. But if you go north in the summer, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, here we go. Rusty's on a roll this morning. Nothing but mistakes. Uh, actually, uh, two states I like are Arizona and um, New Mexico, okay? Now, as to 
the winter weather in either one of those states, uh, unless you're in the northern, very northern part, it's probably going to be wonderful. Okay. As to the cost of land and restrictions, can't help you there. Depends on where you want to go. The way I would suggest that you determine that is to get on Zillow Real Estate website, Z-I-L-L-O-W, pick you an area and start checking for places that uh, are in your price range and in the climate you like, etc. And as far as the restrictions, that'll come next. You know, once you select an area that you like, you found some prices that you like, then go to the next step, contact the realtor or whoever owns the property and find out what the deed restrictions are. And uh, if it's in a uh, property owner's association uh, or there's an association that owns the, that you have to pay dues to, then find out what their requirements and restrictions are also, not because there's deed restrictions and then there's property owner association restrictions, okay? Two levels. So you got to get through both of those. Now, one of the things you can do, like I did, is find you uh, some land that is in the price range you like, in an area you like, in a climate you like, and a crime rate you can live with. And uh, look, if you find a, an area and there is a property owner association there, but it's not active, then you're okay because if it's inactive and you drive through there and you see other RVs, that's one, or you see mobile homes, you know, the old regular mobile homes, uh, then, you know, you can probably go there. You can probably park in that area and, and uh, use that as your home base. So, uh, but again, as far as the cost of living and all that sort of thing, I can't even, you know, the cost of living in New Mexico and Arizona, about the same, they're about the same as Texas, not bad. You know, in, in California, phew, goes up quite a bit. And probably all along the West Coast, uh, it's probably a little higher. But inland, inland, you know, like even in Nevada, but in Nevada, most of the land there is government owned. And uh, the only place you're going to find maybe something around Vegas or Laughlin in the, out in the rural areas. And it's just going to be desert, nothing. And you're going to be probably hauling water. But, uh, but that's something also you need to check on. Whenever you find a place that you like and the land that you like, and it's in the price range you like, and it's in the area that the winter's okay, then... Uh, you know, you're going to have to find out about utilities, you know, because some areas have utilities nearby and you can access those fairly inexpensively. Some don't. For example, out in the Big Bend area of Texas, the land is really cheap, but there's no utilities. OK, there's no water. And if there is electric, uh, it's going to cost you several thousand dollars to get it to your property because it may come have to come off the highway somewhere. They may have to put in eight or ten telephone posts or more. And they charge you for that now. It used to be they didn't charge you very much, but now they do charge the hell out of you. It can cost you twenty or thirty thousand dollars to get uh, utilities a mile and a half, two miles from the highway. No kidding. And as far as drilling a water well, depends on where you are. And if they have a, a community water system, that's a plus. But again, suggestion first for anybody that's looking for a home base. Pick an area that you think you might like. Pick a state. Start with a state. Okay, New Mexico, Arizona, or pick like I, like I just said, maybe pick both states. Then pick a region that you think you might like because of the climate. It's easy to get the climatological data uh, from the weather ch channel, you, or you can go to do a weather search and find out what the climate is for the past 20, 30 years, and see if that's an area that you want to be in the summer or winter or whenever you want to be there. And uh, once you've determined that. Then start narrowing the search down to locations, and uh, you know you're usually uh, if you get or look at property near communities, ten thousand population in that area, the property is going to be a little less expensive than when you get close to the metropolitan area, because everybody that lives in a metropolitan area wants to live in a rural area to get out of the city, so that drives the price of land up within a driving distance of the city, which can be an hour and a half. So that's about 80 miles all the way around the city. And, uh, but you get around some of these little communities like 10,000 population, 5,000 population that have a Walmart and all the amenities, things you need or want. That's fine. That's all you need. You're like Socorro, New Mexico is not bad. 
Uh, it's a little warm in the summer, but overall the winters are great. Uh, and it's a, the land around that area is fairly cheap in Socorro. Uh, Taos, New Mexico, you could probably find your place near Cuesta or some of the little towns around it. Arroyo de Seco would be another one. But, but you, know, you have to be careful on the restrictions, and also their winters are cold. Cold, cold. And so you may not like that. You know, the Phoenix area is always, everybody likes that. But, you know, again, it's a metropolitan area. You're going to have to get out about two hours from Phoenix in any direction to get property that's probably reasonable. And you'd be lucky if you can find anything with water and electric. But be that as it may, uh, I'm sorry I can't be of any more help. But I can just give you guidance as to what your search uh, criteria might be. You know, find the air, go to Zillow, Z I L L O W. It's a, a real estate thing all over the USA. And you pick an area and define your pro, whatever you want, you know, the price range, the size, whether it's raw land or whatever you want. And once you've defined that, it'll find them. It will. If there's any out there that are for sale, uh, it finds them. Okay. So anyway, having said that, thumbs up. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye bye. Can't wait to see the quality of this one. I did it with a new camera or different camera. And you can see it's kind of grainy, isn't it? Hmm. Anyway, guys, have a good day. Bye bye.